Hey everybody, Hunter back again from Showtime Studios. Uh, this video is going to be a kit review. Uh, I mentioned it in the uh, part two of the vet build, or the hobby room remodel project build, I guess you could call it. And uh, this is going to be a uh, inbox review of a kit that um, we're going to be doing for the 24 hour build. At least uh, Marcus and me will be doing it um, as of right now. And I've opened this thing up, I've looked through it, um, studied the instructions and stuff, and I have to say it, it seems like it's a very nice kit. So we'll go over some of the things that I did notice that's uh, real good about the kit, and some things that I noticed that may cause a little bit of an issue, especially if you're going into competition with it. But um, for you guys that are building to put on your own shelf, uh, excellent kit. Um, you know, really, I don't have anything negative to say about the kit. I think it's very, it's a very well engineered kit uh, so far. Um, I haven't put it together. We'll find out. Hopefully, everything goes as planned when the 24 hour build starts. But the kit that we're talking about is the new Tamiya Mercedes GT3 car. And like I say, I've already opened this up. So, what we're going to do is uh, go through the parts and the pieces in here. And I'll kind of uh, touch on a few things that I did notice about um, a few parts. And most of it is all positive and very good things. So first off, uh, over here in the corner, we have the body in its own bag. And it is beautiful. Um, I haven't, it's still in the sealed bag. I haven't taken it out yet. But um, I was checking around on it just through the bag uh, with my finger and... I don't see a mold line on the body anywhere. Um, now, that's not to say they're not there, but looking at it through this plastic bag, I don't see anything. And the the detail and just how crisp uh, the panel lines are, uh, just a very clean um, casting on this thing. I mean, it's just beautiful. So uh, the body, you know, looks real well. Now, this is a curbside kit, no engine in it. Um, Next, we'll move on to uh, the bag with the tires in it. They are slicks. Uh, they look like they are a staggered profile. Yep. And they have the little poly caps in there that holds them on. Uh, so nothing spectacular there. I did notice they uh, do offer the decal is in here to go on these tires. And that might be something else I do a tutorial on is how I get the uh, decal to blend in with a rubber tire. Uh, some of the competitions I've been to. You can really see a lot of the carrier film and stuff around it. So I'll show you a couple tricks on how to make that blend in. That'll be coming up in 2018, so stay tuned for that. Uh, next up, we have the clear parts, which is basically the back glass and the windshield. And what else do we have in here? The headlight lenses, the driving light lenses, uh, tail lights are in here. Very clear, um, just beautiful clear parts. Uh, typical Tamiya quality on that. And next we're down to instructions. It's laying there, so we'll go ahead and glance through them real quick just to bring you up to date on what the instruction sheet looks like. Uh, typical Tamiya instruction sheet. Has a picture of the uh, model on there, a description. Has your uh, paint color callouts here, and of course what tools they recommend for it. Uh, so, you know, if anybody out there is a beginning modeler or, you know, has done very few models, uh, this kit here would be a very nice kit to do. It's not real in-depth. It is a curbside. And I think a uh, beginner with a little bit of uh, talent could do this uh, very easily and make a nice model out of it. So we'll go ahead and flip open the instructions here. Uh, part one, you just work on the chassis pan. And then two, you're working on the brakes and the front suspension. Uh, let's see, two, three, four, and five is all the brakes and front suspension, which are not real in-depth. They just break it down in, in little chunks down through the instruction sheet, which makes it seem like a lot of parts and a lot of steps, but it's really not. Um, then you move on to the interior detail uh, in part seven. Uh, it is a multi-color um, interior in this car, so you'll have to go in and do it one color. And then you got to go in and tape it off and do some areas in semi-gloss black. Uh, not real hard to do, but a um, little bit time consuming. And step eight, you work on the roll cage. Step nine is the roll cage in the seat. And then step ten, 
uh, you install those components. Uh, step 11 is the dash, which is another very nice uh, molded piece. Uh, it does have the Formula One style steering wheel in it that gets um, metal transfers and decals. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Step 12, we put the dash in and do the door panels. And then on step 13, you actually set the uh, whole interior tub down onto the uh, chassis pan. And then they move on to uh, working on the body, actually putting the nose piece on in step 14 and the tail section. And a lot of the scoops and stuff go in. Same thing in uh, step 15. Uh, 16, you work on putting the front grill assembly together, which is a very nice piece. I'll show you that uh, when we go through the parts here. And uh, this kit does come with the masking uh, tape for the uh, windows. So you can do the black outline around the windows. That's a nice touch. It's nice to have it in here. Uh, it's already pre-cut. You just put it on the glass, airbrush your um, black or semi-gloss black, whatever you want to use on it, and uh, pull the uh, masking off, and it's perfect. So uh, let's see. What do we have? Step 18, you're doing the wipers. Step 19, uh, you're adding a few more odds and ends body pieces. And then uh, step 20 through 24 is adding the, the clear parts, the headers, um, some of the screening that goes in it, which is also included in the kit. Uh, step 25, we move on to the wheels and tires. And then in step 26, you put those on. Uh, step 27, you mount the body to the chassis. And then 28 through 31 is putting all the exterior body accessories on, uh, like the wing, the uh, fuel fillers, uh, the you know the splitters, uh, some of the other decals that come along with it. Uh, what else do we have on? That's about it on that part. And then it goes into uh, the decal layout, which is right there, and also on the very back page is a decal layout. So typical to my instructions laid out very well. Uh, the steps are broken down real nice. So next we move on to some of the parts that we have in the kit and this is the interior. What do we have in here? We have the interior in here, some of the suspension parts, uh, the exhaust is in here, the pedals, the radiator, things like that. And just then the radiator alone, which is uh, has a little fan cast into it. I mean, just beautiful um, casting on that. It looks real nice. Tamaya did a heck of a job on this kit. Uh, next in the parts box, we have the chrome tree, which from what I see on the chrome right now, it could pretty much be used straight out of the bag. Uh, looks real good. There is some injector pin marks on the back of the grill, but the way that they designed this, those are covered up. So it's, uh, and then you have the fuel fillers, it looks like. Uh, yeah, that's the fuel fillers on here. Or that could be something for the lights. That could be something for the headlights. I'm not sure. We'll find out when we get to building it. But uh, not a lot of chrome parts. Uh, what we have there? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like 11 uh, chrome parts on there. Uh, next, we move on to uh, the rear panel, the rear fascia, and the front nose piece. The scoops are on this tree. Uh, the radiator, the cold air for the radiator. Um, the mirrors on here, the roll cage. Uh, another section to the uh, multi-piece grill that goes in it. So uh, everything is molded real nice. Uh, a few injector pin marks here and there. Some of them are raised, some of them are recessed. Uh, but most of them are hidden. And speaking of injector pin marks, I did notice one thing on the um, interior pan uh, that a lot of this is exposed. Uh, it doesn't get covered up with like seats or anything like that. But there is some very shallow injector pin marks, uh, several of them actually, uh, on the interior floor pan. So if you're going into competition, that's something you're going to have to address. Uh, whether you cover them up and cheat or um, actually go in and sand all that stuff down and get it all prepped and ready to go. But uh, as we get to uh, building this thing on the 24-hour build, um, I'll give you some um, things that I run into. And if I find something that you know works real well as far as taking care of that type of stuff, uh, we'll let you know about it. So that's that parts tree. And the last parts tree that we have is the uh, black parts, uh, the semi-gloss black. And this is the wing, the front splitter, uh, some of the suspension components, 
let's see, what else do we have? The um, pan that goes underneath, the wheels, the dash uh, is all in here. Uh, very well molded, just, you know, typical Tamiya quality. Looks real nice. A uh, few injector pin marks, like underneath the wing that you're going to have to address. Have to get rid of those. Uh, let's see, do we have any on the wing supports? Um, I don't, yeah, they are on the wing supports. So there's a couple injector pin marks on those that, that's going to be visible that you'd have to take care of. Um, if you're going into competition, if you're not, then, you know, you could probably paint that and not really worry about it. But, um... Going into competition, I highly recommend that you get rid of all the injector pin marks because that's basically, uh, it comes down to basics. And basics is what makes a good model. So that's all the parts that come in the kit, uh, which is not a lot. And then we have something else laying down in here. Some background information on the car. And it's in several different languages. And the English version is at the top on the back side. But it's just a uh, description of the car. And then they have the metal transfers that come in this kit. You can see them right here. And then this black stuff is the screening that goes behind the grill and a couple other openings in the car. And they have the pre-cut uh, window mass, which is basically Tamiya tape that's pre-cut. And I already explained how those work. And then we also have the decals herself. Not a lot of them. But uh, it looks real good on this uh, car. Very, you know, subtle. Not a whole bunch of graphics all over the place. So that basically wraps up um, the inbox review on the Tamiya Mercedes GT3 car. And like I say, I'm looking forward to building this. Uh, I think it'll be a good candidate for a 24-hour build. So um, hopefully we can get it done in that amount of time. And I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on it here. And also, when I was at the hobby shop... Um, Today, I picked up uh, a can of the TS-42 uh, light gun metal. And this is the color that I will be using on the car. I watched a video. Uh, they actually make a special color for this car. It's TS-100. Uh, it's basically a, a light gun metal, but it is semi-gloss. And most of the Tamiya paints um, in the TS line are gloss. Uh, so they make an actual paint that is supposed to replicate the finish of this car But I watched a couple videos on it uh, from you know pro builders and they say it's a little bit too much metallic flake uh, In the TS 100 so I went ahead and picked up the TS 42 uh, This is the same color that I'm using on my Ferrari um, What is that Ferrari that is a uh, Enzo I think I'd have to look it's the one I was working on a couple videos ago. That'll be back on the bench in 2018. But anyway, this is the color that I used on it. Very nice color. And I went ahead and picked up another can of the TS-79. And this is the semi-gloss clear. Now what I'll do is since this color is, um, is shiny, uh, the 24-hour build will most likely be sprayed directly out of the can. Uh, that's the plan anyway. And this comes out shiny as is, so I can go ahead and do some light buffing on it, put the decals on, and then after they're on, we'll go back over it with the TS-79 and clear it. And that'll give us our um, satin finish that the actual car has. So uh, that's my review on the um, Tamiya uh, Mercedes GT3 car, AMG. And like I say, I highly recommend this to uh, anybody that's into this type of car or likes... Um, you know, the more exotic style cars, uh, I think it's going to be a very good kit to build. Um, even though it's curbside, it's very straightforward, uh, very um, well engineered. So as we get into building it, we'll let you know uh, if we run into any issues. So that's all we've got for the kit review on that. Uh, like always, I want to thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.